Check out this Zoom lesson where I show Art exactly how to control distance from the bunker. All right, so jumping into the bunker part of our Zoom session. Um, Am I in a good position? Yeah, it looks great. And so when it comes to bunker play, if I said that your primary tilt is important in putting, which it is, it's even more important in the bunker. So I want to see right. a, a deeper primary tilt, which of course will lower the hands up a little bit as well. Because yeah, if I start, I've, yeah, go I on. Found, I found that by lowering my hands, the distance control is much better. Good. Because what we're so doing I'm, when we lower the hands is we're better engaging the bounce of the club. We're, and right. we're also adding more dynamic loft. And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so what do you want me to do? I want to see a full swing. Full, full swing. Full swing. So I want you to get deeper into posture. I want you to open the face and drop the handle a little bit. All right. <laughs> Awesome. I want you to hit two of those. Did both those balls go roughly the same distance? Yeah, that one wasn't quite as good as the first one. But did it go the same distance? Yeah. Roughly? Okay, yeah, right. that one that one took a little bit more sand and therefore should have spun a little bit less. And ran out a little more, yeah. 100%. Good there. So I want you to go ahead and pace that off. Okay. Uh, go ahead and count as your steps so I, I don't miss you on the Three, screen. Three, four, Five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, perfect. So I want you to jump back in the sand because we got your sixty-degree wedge, correct? Right. Okay. So again, same thing. So again, if you have about a fifteen-yard bunker shot, you're making grabbing your lob wedge and you're making a relatively full action through there. So what we're going to have you do next is do the same thing, but we're hitting more of a pitch style shot. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see a ball that goes closer to 10, just throwing it out there in terms of numbers that I've been seeing um, pretty consistently across the board. So deeper primary tilt. Oops. Okay. Let's chat about that one for a second because the first move back was a little bit more of the hands as opposed to rotating from the scapula. That was really good. Yep. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit shorter. Yes. Good. We're going to see two more or one more rather is fine. Good there. Now okay. we're gonna, I want to see two more where we just hit a chip. How's the sand type? Just wondering. Uh, this bunker isn't particularly good, but I don't know what type of sand it is. It's, it's, uh, I wouldn't call it powdery, but it's not packed either. It's not okay. Seminole packed. Yeah. Okay. Just a pitch. I mean, a chip. Uh, just a chip. Yep. The same thing to that restriction point. Shorter. Oh yeah. Good. So again, what we're utilizing here is the same exact concept that you just want to check a point for literally five minutes, which is we can, again, as long as you're getting deeper into a primary tilt, again, not even talking about the role of negative tilt from different lives and conditions, but again, we can get really good at controlling distance. That was perfect there. That was really based good. On, based on hitting a chip style shot, a pitch style shot, or a fuller style shot, which is for you, what was more of a partial wedge, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a future lesson. Um, but the, again, we want to do the same thing, which is we can go ahead and your homework for the week is going to be, let's get you calibrated. So I want you to hit 10, 20 shots with every club, hitting some chips with every wedge, hitting some pitches with every wedge and start yeah, marking what them I've, down. 
what I've been doing, which is incorrect. I've been, I mean, I'll pan. I've been placing balls out all throughout here and then hitting to various flags. But I haven't been, I haven't been stepping at all. So, you know, I, I mean, I've always, I've always played anything inside of 50 or 60 yards. Which is a lot of just, I've just eyeballed it. Yeah. I've never, I think I need to go beyond eyeballing and start knowing what the distance is and then I can zero in better. I've, I've got a question. Do you yeah. just eyeball it from 160 yards? No. Okay. Let's do some full swing. No, I eyeball it from 100 in. Okay. But again, if, if you have, let's say I have a 100-yard shot. Okay, so for me, I can either hit a full lob wedge. I can hit a partial wedge, um, typically between gap wedge. Um, sometimes I choke down on a pitching wedge. I can even hit a chip, or sorry, a pitch action with a seven iron, or I can hit a chip with a four iron. And I know that all those clubs are going roughly 100 yards. So if, I'm, if I somehow hit it under some trees somewhere and I have 100 yards, I need to keep the ball super low, I'm not guessing should I forward press a seven iron, how hard should I hit it? I know yeah. if I hit a chip style shot, the ball is going to go roughly 100 yards based on whatever conditions the ball has to run through, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important to calibrate. The same way uh -huh. between a nine iron and an eight iron, we want to be able to calibrate, you know, our wedges as well. You know, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's laziness, but to some extent, it's just, it's foolish not to do that. And, yeah, I'll count. I can't, that's easy. That's an easy fix. I would agree with that. And again, if you're saying you're hitting the ball relatively well and just not scoring, you know, it, you know that you want to hit the ball pin high with a full swing with an iron. Right. You, would, you, you want the same opportunity for a wedge. And you got yeah, a whole and, bunch and, of wedges in, in your hand, not, not to discount your feel, because I think there's certainly an element of that saying you want to feel, you know, what it's going to take to get the ball to the hole, but at least do it with the right club. Yeah, and and why would you want to zero in on 160 yards and not zero in on, you know, 60 feet? The work they do with the players when I'm when I'm out there, you know, the same way how you know how we talk about the restriction point or not the restriction point, but having um, in putting bring the putter head back to your foot versus shaft to knee versus grip to hip. Mm -hmm. That changes based on green speeds, and so I do the same right. thing with my guys where it's like we go onto a flat spot on a green. We grab all their wedges. We get the numbers for that week within plus or minus a yard. Of course, we know if it's uphill or downhill, do things change? Absolutely. But at least we have our stock numbers and we can, and we can, we can worth our math. We can work our math off of that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and finish up. We'll do some full swing. I'll, I'll see two face on. Perfect. Um, and then we will go ahead and see. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed watching that private Zoom lesson as a critical part of the learning process is actually found in watching other students going through the exact same breakthroughs in their game that you're looking to accomplish. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one private Zoom coaching session with me, go and click the link or the button in the description below and you'll be taken to my personal calendar where you will easily schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me where we will literally spend an hour polishing every element of your golf swing. And again, I really do appreciate your interest in who I am and what I do, and cannot wait to be the guy that all your golfing buddies absolutely hate this season. So if you want to schedule your one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, go and click the button below.